Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the ESTPs and how they are like. I'm going to talk about all eight of the cognitive functions of the ESTP in such a way that you may not have really heard about it before. I want to start off with inferred thinking. That is their secondary function, the second function that they use. And they share that second function with ENTPs. So how does that look like? So with inferred thinking as a secondary function, that is the parent function of the ESCP. That means that is how they take care of other people. They like to, they love to be able to explain things to other people. If you observe ESCPs, ENTPs, they like to be able to explain things, to be able to explicate things. And they actually do that a lot more than INTPs and ICPs, which sounds kind of funny because INTPs and ICPs, that's their primary function. So what is the deal here? Why is there that difference? First of all, I want to mention, this is why a lot of ECPs will get mistyped as ICPs. They might think that they're ICPs because they're expressing, they're very verbal about their introvert thinking. The reason for that is, second of all, that's the role of the, the parent function is to be, that's how you take care of others. It's a tool by which you used to be able to take care of other people. ICPs and INTPs, on the other hand, introvert thinking is their god. It's the part of their self. Introverted thinking, extroverted feeling, that is part of the core self. For ECPs, introverted thinking is more of a tool, right? They do very much value it. They they're, they're find it interesting in itself, but it's still a very much a tool. So ICPs and INTPs are going to be conservative about introverted thinking. Like they want to be really super precise about their system. They're not going to be as liberal expressing it. Whereas ECPs, they could be more liberal about ex expressing introverted thinking because that is not their god. Now let's go to extroverted feeling. That's the tertiary function again. They share this with ENTPs as well. Tertiary function is the child function. So it behaves in a childlike manner. It has a particular expression in ECPs and also ENTPs. It can make them rather charming and endearing. And this is due to almost like a puppy dog like nature and it could and people could really lo love it right and a lot of ecps would think that their extra feeling is like really strong and other people might perceive the extra feeling of ecps as being very strong because what we do with our third function is that we push it forward so when you first meet a type what you notice most is extra sensing the, the primary function and tertiary function being pushed forward out in the in the personality. But if you really observe the ESP, they actually have somewhat of a limited repertoire of how to use extroverted feeling. When they what they do know of extroverted feeling, they try to push it out of their personality. But if you compare them to ENFJs and ESFJs, for example, they're extra feeling is going to appear like a leaf in comparisons. I think once ECPs, they meet these two types, they start to realize, oh, my extra feeling is not that strong. I, there's going to be a lot of more awkwardness and clumsiness around this function. I think in terms of personal growth, this goes for all types, is when the third function starts to do its adulting behavior. Initially, like ECPs, just like ENTPs, they may they kind of have a childlike extroverted feeling. They want people to like them, to admire them, to uh, respect them a lot, to give them like applause. They're, they're seeking extroverted feeling from others to be the idea is to be loved by others. When you look at ECPs that appear very mature, that's when they turn extroverted feeling into an adult. So how that looks like is basically just how extroverted feeling types use extroverted feeling, being able to take care of the group and prioritize the group's need. So now let's talk about um, introverted intuition. So introverted intuition is a very weak function of the ECP, but it very much heavily colors the ECP's life. So on a day-to-day -day basis, ECPs are going to be managing the world using extroverted sensing. So they're very much living moment and present and a really terrible when it comes to introverted intuition, unless they learn to develop it over time on a day-to-day -day basis. How, the, how does that look like? So I, I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm trying to create a plan with an ECP to go out somewhere. We need to do something. We need to be able to catch the, the train or something like that. And I go up to them and I said, we got to go. And then they're just like sitting around and lounging around with their cup of wine or like 
their cigarette and they're just like completely absorbed in a moment of what's going on right now. So, and then I'm like trying to like snap them out of it. It's like, we got to go. You can't just, <laughs> you can't just do that. But that, I think that's like how it kind of pans out. But intro intuition in some ways is actually secretly very, ha- it's, it's very powerful in the ESCP psyche. They're very adaptable and amenable to the moment, but underneath they have this like underlying anxiety that's like really intense and that actually bothers and grates, grates them. Usually they're able to do things very physically to be able to take care of their mental state and what's going on without having to reflect on the bigger questions of life. But all that is hidden in the back and, and grating them on the background. You get almost like, a, it's kind of like the opposite of INFJs. So in INFJs, they're constantly using intuition, kind of forecasting things and thinking about things that are, are not about the present and like doomsday kind of stuff. But then when you observe in INFJs, they have something like in their the way they embody themselves that's like very easy breezy about them that is that underlying expert sensing that in a way even though they're talking about these things at a deep level they're not really worried about it. and ecps are kind of flipped the other way they're like kind of in the moment but then like there's something that is like grading them in an intuition way and eventually the intuition catches up to them so ecps are very good at taking care of the tangibles in life especially when they if, if they develop their six function, their expert thinking function, which is very strong, when expert sensing, expert thinking come together, the, in terms of the tangibles of life, they got it down. But in terms of intangible things like personal relationships and introvert intuition kind of stuff, the meaning of life, the purpose, that's something that they can't get a grasp of and they can't solve it using taking care of the tangibles. And they will try, but they, they can't. So now I want to talk about some of the shadow function stuff. Now we could go to extroverted intuition. So this is the the role function. So this is how they appear initially. When you look at ECPs, they actually look very open-minded and they act very open-minded to things. Later on, when you talk with them over time, you can start to see the effect of introverted intuition. Like the more you get to know a type, the more you see their inferior function side. ECPs, when you talk with them over a long period of time, you can see this tendency to want to express their inner sense of conviction. So like almost imagine conviction as being something that's more narrow, like more about specific belief systems, right? But they start off very open-ended and open-minded. And you start to see this side of them that's full of conviction uh, on the inside. ECPs could be like very interested in philosophy. They like like to talk about topics uh, in terms of ideas. Uh, if you compare them to ENTPs, ENTPs are a lot more, they're very bookish about it. They tend to see a lot of all these little nuances. But in the ECP's mind, the way that the ENTP goes around understanding things is too academic and too bookish. ECPs feel like they are straight shooters, they're straight to the point, and they're realistic. So I've, I have the pleasure of witnessing to an ENTP and ECP arguing with one another, and that's basically what the difference is between um, their perspectives. They're, they're trying to explain to me, to me things using their, their introvert thinking. And then they got into a conflict around how they use their primary function. So even so ECPs, they have they express extra intuition, but it's not something that they truly value. Like they they truly value the realism and, and that directness of expert sensing. Like when ECPs tap into expert sensing, that's also a sign of maturity too. It's actually a function that is of medium strength when it comes to ECP, and that's something this function, the role function is the function that I guess you could say it's able to grow the most when you look at it. I'm kind of oversimplifying it a bit, but you could actually see a lot of types they kind of focus and they work and they strengthen their, their role function. So the next I'm going to talk about the fifth function of the ECP introvert sensing. And this is the opposing function. So ECPs are actually strong at introvert sensing. They have a good sense of how to use it, but um, they definitely prefer extroverted sensing and they will suppress introverted sensing for the sake of extroverted sensing. So extroverted sensing kind of has like 
a get into the moment kind of feel to it that kind of wants to push through with things. Introvert sensing is more about like finding a sense of homeostasis and a sense of comfort. So ECPs are are going to prefer more of expert sensing. Also, if you were to compare ECPs and ICPs, so ICPs, even though they value expert sensing, they're really strong at introvert sensing. And in, whereas ECPs, they suppress introvert sensing. So if you look at ICPs, ICPs tend to care a lot more about details. So when they're talking about things, they're going to be very focused on on that ECPs, they're going to be not as focused about introvert sensing. Um, they're more focused on expert sensing. So they get into things because they're very curious about their physical environment and they want to kind of act on it. And if something happens that kind of goes wrong, they want to then they get curious about it and they want to be able to find some way to fix it, maybe using their introvert thinking and all that. But ISTPs, on the other hand, they prioritize introvert thinking. So they're focused on under, primarily on understanding the world in itself. And, and then they do so in a lot of nitty gritty detail because they're actually very strong at introvert sensing. ECPs care less about that. Now I want to talk about expert thinking because I think this is actually a really interesting function of the ECP is actually one of their, their, their strongest functions. So their, the strongest functions of the ECP are actually expert sensing and expert thinking. They value expert sensing, but they don't value expert thinking. When you read So Siang's descriptions about ECPs, they talk, these descriptions talk about how ECPs are able to use expert thinking as a function. And I think they kind of over exaggerate how a typical ECP uses it. The thing is, expert thinking is a very strong function, but it's not one that is valued by the ESP and as a result it could be neglected. So a way I like to talk about the sixth function is that it's a a treasure that's in the attic and when you dust off the the treasure chest, you could open up the treasure chest and discover a strength that is already naturally there. ECPs can have very good business acumen. And I think at least initially when if when ECPs develop expert thinking, that kind of makes up for the lack of introvert intuition in a way because they start to develop a sense a, of discipline. So what I mean by this is that like when you observe ECPs, they actually they don't really use their expert thinking so much. That's why I kind of disagree with the Sosyonks descriptions a bit. Their ECPs and ENTPs are kind of like deadbeats, <laughs> deadbeat people. But like once they develop the expert thinking, that's where you see the businessman, businesswoman, ECP and ENTP start to really shine through. And um, that's when they have that combination of extra th sensing and extra thinking. That is when they have, that's when they're very much known for their discipline and their tenacity, right? But otherwise, you know, they don't necessarily engage in it. They be kind of like very lazy people. So I think it's when ECPs develop expert sensing, expert thinking, that's when they're really good at taking care of everything that's very tangible in life. But if they ignore introvert feeling, introvert intuition, they're going to ignore things of personal meaning to them. And it gets very much, all that stuff gets very much neglected. So when it comes to the sixth function, when ECPs develop that sixth function, uh, how I look at the sixth function is that when it's developed, it does create a sense of maturity in a type, but not necessarily a sense of like ethical or moral um, maturity. So they look more mature for developing expert thinking, but they're not necessarily they do it not necessarily do it in in a good way necessarily, right? Some do it in a good way, some are going to do it in a bad way, right? So that's why you can have all those very sneaky businessmen ECPs running around, for instance. Final function I want to talk about in regards to the shadow functions is introvert feeling. So ESPs are introvert feeling polar types. That means this is their weakest function. It's their blind spot that they don't see. I see this constantly mischaracterized as ESPs lack values. I think every type has their own values. And you could actually see ESPs being very for forthright about the things that they value, that they care about. They they, they could have causes and things of that nature. I think it's more like when they're lacking introverted feeling, they're not sensitive to their own feelings. And 
they ignore their own subjective internal condition. And so they kind of just wash over their, their feelings and they may not like necessarily like realize that they, they've been like traumatized for it, for example, until it suddenly like hits them, hits them out of the blue. And also like you could see ECPs kind of like they don't carry themselves necessarily with a lot of appropriateness. A lot of people attribute this to lack of extra feeling, but that's not true. It's because they lack interior feeling. They kind of lack that sense of uh, civility about them when they're not as developed. But when ECPs develop extra feeling that could kind of make up for it because when they care about the group needs, that kind of covers the extra the, the feeling ground. So it doesn't make their introverted feeling polar function seem so weak. But they essentially they kind of lack a sense have a sense of that sensitivity or civility. And that's only like a particular kind of values. But I would say overall ECPs, they have values. They can be very forth forthright about their values. So I guess the function I miss of uh, funny enough is focusing on expert sensing itself. So you could see two different explanations of expert sensing. One is the Myers-Briggs version, and one is the Socianx version. The Myers-Briggs version is that they're attuned to the present and to their five senses, and they have an enjoyment of life. And the expert sensing in the Socianx version is more of like the sense of aggression and these kind of push-through kind of qualities. If you read Carl Jung's original description of expert sensing, it's actually a mixture of both. So how I put this together is just, just basically ECPs are attuned to the moment and they're aware of their surroundings. They're so curious about their surroundings that they want to be able to act on it. And that kind of causes that socionics version of expert sensing to shine through where they have to act on the environment because they're so curious on it, causing that sense of what comes off as forcefulness or aggression to occur. And socialist kind of adds that element of discipline. Yes, a lot of expert sensing types, you could say that they're, they're relatively disciplined compared to their intuitive counterparts. But it's really when ECPs, they develop that expert thinking, you could really see that discipline shine through that expert sensing, expert thinking, the doer archetypes start to be able to show through. Okay, so I'm here. I just want to add some additional notes because they're just reviewing what I did in this video and just I want to make some additional comments to help clarify things. I think to talk about the sixth function, which is extra thinking for ESTPs, what I really mean to say is that when the, any type is to develop their sixth function, it makes them look competent, but not necessarily ethically or morally mature. So in the case of ESTPs, they develop extra thinking and that with that combination of expert sensing with their expert thinking, they look like more competent versions of the ESTP type. And I also did not like really clearly explain how it kind of makes up for the lack of introverted intuition. It's because when you develop expert thinking, that kind of like that business acumen, it makes it seem like you have a vision. Like for instance, you start like a company, for example, you're working on something. However, it doesn't actually substitute for introverted intuition. So even when ECPs develop expert thinking, they're going to still have that lack of introverted intuition satisfaction about it because they don't they don't look at the intangibles of life. But expert sensing, expert thinking, when they come together, ECPs could be very good at taking care of the tangibles of life, good at surviving uh, skills. They kind of just like naturally do cognitive behavioral therapy on themselves, but not necessarily like the the more like reflective stuff like the psychodynamic dynamic stuff or existential kind of stuff. So I want to talk about expert sensing a bit more. Expert sensing. So if you look at the Mars Briggs description, it's also about like finding enjoyment in life, the pleasures of life. And you find that in Carl Jung's original writing about expert sensing. So how does that like match up with the sense of aggression or or like uh, push through quality? So the thing is easy piece, they could very much enjoy life. But because they're also focused on sensation, when they're if they become overly focused on sensation in itself, that could lead to dissatisfaction. That could lead them to kind of wanting to seek out more and more stimulation, and so they start to get really aggressive. For example, and so a lot of extra sensing dominant types, ESFPs and ESTPs, they can actually report this constant lack of like satisfaction. There's always more that they could do to kind of climb up in terms of status or whatever that may be. So that's where introvert intuition comes in. So introvert intuition, because it has a perspective on life, it could actually start to have a sense of contentment about it. So when ESCPs 
are to develop intuition, it'll help be able to address this constant sense of sense of dissatisfaction that they might feel. This is my um, explanation for the eight functions of the ESP. If you like it, you could click like and also subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching.